Hello everyone and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who is leading worship today, we welcome you. We're so excited that you have joined with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for worship today on this first Sunday in the season of Lent and as we jump into our Good Enough Lenten series. I want to encourage you, if this is your first time to worship with us, we're really excited you're here. Uh, we'd like for you to use our contact form. The link to that and the QR code to that are available right now to you. The contact form uh, has a place for you to put your name and address, your email address in particular. We'd love to be able to be in contact with you. Get our e-newsletter to you, which has all of the information about upcoming opportunities for worship and for service and for small groups and connecting. And then also know that that contact form has a place for prayer requests requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. So we hope that everyone will use that contact form today. When we gather for online worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. And that means that we're going to participate. We're going to turn off other distractions and other devices and really focus in on what it is that we're doing together today. This isn't just a random video you're watching. It's worship. And so uh, it's really important to just really do what it is we're doing. Stand up and sing when it's time to sing. Pray when it's time to pray. When we have Holy Communion, participate in Holy Communion. All of those things things. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. That means that the way that we are in the comment section together, the way that we may be gathered with other people in whatever space we're in, the way that we're sending this out into the world, that all of it is a blessing to everyone who is participating and everyone who may come in contact with our worship today. Now it is Holy Communion for all people as well, so I encourage you, if you have not already done so, to get some bread or crackers or baked good of some kind, some juice, a beverage of some kind, so that when we get to that Holy Communion time, you're ready to go and can fully participate in that wonderful time of blessing. Again, welcome to worship. The season of Lent in the church developed over centuries as a time of deepened reflection. Originally a period of preparation for baptisms on Easter Eve, it later became a time for all Christians to take stock of their lives and examine how the connection to their faith was progressing or not, and to recommit to a life of goodness. This year, we will indeed open up and take stock, but rather than feel guilty, a popular Lenten pastime, about what we haven't accomplished in our lives and faith, we will spend some time questioning how our culture's obsession with achievement and perfection actually keeps us from the true depths of life and faith. This Lent will take some time to turn ladder climbing into garden tending, nurturing our souls, and embracing our holy, good enough lives. What in our lives do we dream about for tomorrow, void of sorrow? Time spent regretting decisions of our yesterdays, mistakes we made. Sometimes we get what we get. Life disappoints us and yet. God is still here and somehow this faith is good enough. What in our lives do we dream about for tomorrow, void of sorrow? Time spent regretting decisions of our yesterdays. Mistakes we made, sometimes we get what we get. Life disappoints us, and yet, God is still here, and somehow this faith is good enough. Hi, I'm Patty Ingram, and I'm a member here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please join me in the spirit of prayer. 
Holy One, our refuge and shelter, we call out to you, sometimes in praise, sometimes in distress, as life goes. Whether we perceive it or not, you are there. Open us this day to your presence in the smile of a friend, in the call of a bird, in the simple and good enough moments that fill our days. Amen. Please join us in singing, This is Amazing Grace. is Cindy Arnold and I'm a member here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We find ourselves hungry for many things that we believe will bring us satisfaction. 
In today's reading from the Bible, the devil lays a bet that Jesus will jump at the chance for glory, fame, and the quick fix. Who wouldn't? But Jesus keeps up the pithy one-liners long enough that the tempter just has to slink away. What are the temptations that catch your ear, singing out promises that your life should be more special than it is? What if ordinary life is already holy, as is? Let us take a moment of silent reflection, offering to God our reflections and confessions. Hear this compassionate word from the letter to the Romans. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Know that already God is offering us freedom from the temptations of the not-enoughness of our time, inviting us to love and revere the seeming ordinariness of the day-to-day -day so that we might recognize its true beauty. And know that despite our sometimes faltering steps, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are being forgiven even now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. With this assurance of Jesus' love and forgiveness, let's share that love and peace with one another. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Share that in the comments, share that with whomever you might be gathered with for this worship, and you can share that with me too. Peace be with you. Hello everyone, we are the Brinkley family. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. Good morning, I'm Richard Parrish. I sing in the Douglas Avenue Adult Choir. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Hannah Brown. And I'm Karen Brown. Peace be, be with, with you. you. God is still here and somehow this faith is good. It is time for small talk. So I want to encourage all the children who are joining with us in online worship to get in really close to your device and to your screen so that you can see and hear absolutely everything that goes on with small talk. Small talk is led by Miss Laurie, our director of children and youth ministries and her wonderful assistant, Laud the Lamb. So it's time for small talk. Let's get ready. Good morning, everybody. It is Miss Lori and Laud the Lamb. And today we're doing a little cooking. We have sweet potatoes. So we have this sweet potato, very nice looking sweet potato. And then we have, oh, we have, well, we have another sweet potato, but this one has a, has a really good personality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna peel this one. They look different on the outside. Well, how does that happen? Hmm, let's see. I'm gonna try something. Laud is going to try to cut them and see what they look like on the inside. just as I suspected. The beautiful sweet potato is like perfect on the inside too. Let's see this other good personality sweet potato. And, huh, they're exactly the same. That's interesting. Because if I was out, 
picking these, I would have picked this one that looked really, really good. And this one that had a much different looking shape is exactly the same inside. So, it's on the outside. They look the same, even though they're different on the outside. Look the same on the inside. It's good enough. Have a great day, guys. Bye. Hello, I'm Todd with Friends. I'm a member at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and I'm on the board of trustees. Our reading from the Bible is Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through our Bible reading today. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until... The opportune time. May God bless our hearing and our understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. I've been on a lot of mission trips uh, with church groups. Our youth group here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church is getting excited and geared up for our upcoming mission trip to Mountaintop in Tennessee this summer in July. I have to say that on these various mission trips that I've gotten to go on, I've learned a lot of lessons, some the easy way, ooh, but a lot more the hard way. One of these lessons is the importance of staying hydrated. You gotta drink enough water or you are just not gonna make it, period. Such a basic, simple thing, enough clean water to drink. This is often the difference between having a good work day with your mission team or just ending up in a bad way. Honestly, that lesson is true for every day of your life, really for every human being on the planet. Clean drinking water, it's key. Now, one of the things I've learned through these experiences is that the first signs of dehydration are irritability and irrationality. So on mission trips, I make sure that we are watching each other's backs on this and are watching for that irritability and irrationality as a sign of dehydration. Again, it's just taking care of one another, whatever it is you are doing every day. Now, my daughters love this simple fact about the links between dehydration and irritability and irrationality. When my husband or I are upset with them and are expressing that with them, you know, maybe in a loud and animated way, every so often one of them will pipe up with, do you need a glass of water? Water. Something so simple, so ordinary, to help break the irritability that comes with dehydration. I mean, water, really? My dehydration is at the root of this irritability? Honestly? It's not something more dramatic or exciting or just you? Sometimes we discount the simple and ordinary as not really worth noticing or not being all that valuable or not being enough, exciting enough, fabulous enough, holy enough, or whatever, enough. But I believe we learned something very different today. We learned something different from Jesus today on this, our first Sunday in Lent. And that's Lent, L-E-N-T. 
This season of Lent is the 40 days before Easter, not including Sundays. And it's a time when we seek to follow Jesus' instruction and example, when we aspire to make room for more intentional spiritual practice that will draw us more deeply into an experience of God's love, a deeper assurance of faith, to be closer to Jesus and more like him as we walk with Jesus through his teachings and healings, his arrest and crucifixion. Remember, spiritual practices are those things that in their doing, their practice, bring us closer to God and shape and form us as people who reflect Jesus in the world. These are things like worship and prayer, fasting, giving, acts of service, Bible study, small groups, and more. These are good and healthy practices that are a gift to us and are pathways that in their regularity as a part of our lives really do bring us closer to God and help us be like Jesus in the world. So on this first Sunday of Lent, in Lent, we tend to read one of the gospel accounts of what happens to Jesus right at the beginning of his ministry, right after he's baptized by John in the River Jordan. And we watch Jesus exercise some spiritual practice in the middle of a seriously difficult life experience. Jesus is led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit where we learn from our Bible reading that he spent 40 days and nights in fasting and prayer, which is why our Lenten observance is also 40 days. We also learn from this telling from the Gospel of Luke that Jesus was tempted by the devil for the entire time. We don't know how he was tempted, but we can imagine. We've been in those places. I'll bet you've felt alone in the metaphorical wilderness before, and you have faced some temptations, believing you really are alone, that no one likes you or loves you, that you're not worthy of being liked or loved, that your life is not what it ought to be or should be, so you might as well cheat or have that drink or whatever. You can fill in your own blanks. For Jesus, we hear that at the end of his time in the wilderness, at the end of his 40 days of prayer and temptation and fasting and temptation, at the end of this, that the devil, the great tempter, swings back around for some final strikes at Jesus, coming at him when Jesus is at his most hungry, famished in all of the ways. The devil comes at Jesus in ways obvious and subtle. The devil says, Jesus, you're the Son of God. You have power. You're hungry right now. Pull out some of that Son of God magic and turn these stones into bread. Feed yourself. And you could turn mountains of stones into bread for others, too. All those hungry people out there. And Jesus says, no, with a word of Scripture. One does not live by bread alone. Next, the devil says, I will give you ultimate power over all of the kingdoms of the world, all the power. Just worship me. You're feeling weak and powerless, aren't you? Let's fix that weakness with a power surge and think of all the good you could do if immediately all of the political authorities followed you right now. And Jesus replies, no, with a word of scripture. Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Finally, the devil takes Jesus to a very high place and says, if you're really the son of God, prove it. Throw yourself off this place. Your scripture says that the angels will swoop in and save you. You could prove right here and now to everyone in a fabulous, showy, miraculous way just who you are, and they will all surely believe you and follow you. And Jesus replies, no, with a word of scripture. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Jesus responds with the promises of God in scripture. He responds with a spiritual integrity, with a turning away from the miraculous, from shows of power or greatness. Things that I, I think we would fully expect from someone who is the Son of God. I mean, if you've got all that power, why not flex it right now? There's something profoundly unsettling about that, isn't there? 
I think there's something profoundly hopeful about it too. In the face of these temptations, Jesus seeks strength to endure, meaning, truth, and a way forward that is simple, not flashy with great big shows of miraculous power. Jesus relies upon the promises of God found in his Bible, relies upon God for strength and for perseverance in this experience of testing and temptation. Jesus shows us what kind of Savior he is, despite what we might think a Savior ought to be. Jesus is God's Son, the Savior of enduring and sacrificial love and self-offering for the whole world, for all time. One of the reasons that we are gifted with this intimate revealing stories also about Jesus is so that we can remember that Jesus lived a real life with real temptations. And that these temptations and struggles happened to him, not just in times when he felt powerful and strong, but in times when he too felt weak and alone, famished, like us. The good news is that we are not alone. You are not alone. Jesus was not alone. In the midst of temptations, struggles in life, it turns out we have some very powerful allies and resources, not the least of which is God and Jesus, and love and faith, our church family, the Bible, music, our friends and family, small groups of all kinds, all of the spiritual practices, all these everyday things and people and relationships that are sacrament or described as sacramental. God provides sacrament in so many ways for us, right in the middle of our everyday lives. The word sacrament, I just used that a couple of times, it's a churchy word, but it's an important one. It comes from the Latin word sacramentum, which is a description of the holy, H-O-L-Y, holy inbreaking of the divine, God, on or in something quite ordinary, like bread and juice that we'll use in the sacrament of communion, or water in the sacrament of baptism, or through our Bible reading, or relationships, or conversations, or shared prayer, or silence, or laughter and play, tears, the sunshine and spring rain, the wind and storm, sacrament right in our ordinary everyday lives. We are steeped in the sacramental inbreaking of God here and now, right now, even in the midst of what we might describe as the most terrible, most horrible moments. Every day our ordinary lives give witness to the sacramental nature of God's action that heals, loves, and saves. But too often we just don't see it or feel it or witness it because we're looking for something else. We may be waiting for something spectacular to happen, like stones turning into bread, angels swooping down to catch us, a million likes on social media, the most perfect experience of whatever, for God to just stop the war or just fix this situation right now how I want it fixed. And in our waiting for something spectacular, then we just might miss the very real inbreaking of God in real time, the sacrament right here, right now, the mystery and reality of it, of people working together, of nations working together, of hearts being softened and turned away from violence, or a moment of silence, that experience of worship, that praying, the laughing, the small group sharing, that simple meal, the walk, the hug, the next step. As we share in the sacrament of Holy Communion in just a few moments, we are going to take some very simple, ordinary things, bread and juice or whatever it is that you have with you, and through the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit, through our praying and sharing together, they're going to become a holy meal that feeds us with love, healing, and power from the inside out. Let this experience of sacrament, this worship, these prayers, this time, this meal, help open your eyes today 
to how God is acting right now in your life, in our ordinary lives, and in the world. Amen. Please join us as we sing, Take, O oh, Take Me As I Am. Take, O oh, Take Me As I Am. Jesus Christ invites everyone to his meal, his feast of Holy Communion. Wherever you are and whoever you are, church member, not a church member, with your culture and race, whatever your age, child, youth, or adult, with your gender identity and your sexual orientation, sitting alone or gathered with your household, however many or few that might be. In the fullness of who you are, however you are, and wherever you are, you are welcome here. I invite you to uh, make sure that you have your bread and your juice ready. I have mine right here, your baked good crackers, your beverage, whatever it is that you have ready, um, as we get our Holy Communion underway. I invite you to join me in prayer for our responsive prayer. I'll say a line and then you say your line back to me as it's on your screen. And you can join in the motions too. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy and loving God, you created this world full of so much beauty and sorrow and called it good and called it enough. Although we feel lost at times, you are ever present. We doubt, resist, turn away and rage, insistent on our own power to pull us through and yet sure that we are to blame, making our lives into a confusing paradox. But you are patient. You are here to meet us, reside with us, always faithful, always present, in this body, the bread, and in this body, the people. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who proclaimed freedom for the bound, justice for the oppressed, grace for the lost, love for the prodigal. Through the life and ministry of Jesus, we can imagine and live into a community where all who struggle are taken into loving arms and those who struggle to love are invited into greater compassion. So in the name of Jesus, we offer the prayers of our hearts to you. Receive our prayers as we share them aloud in our hearts and in the comments. Loving God, we pray especially today for the people of Ukraine, for their safety, for President Putin's heart to turn to you and away from war. We pray for all in need of your help and healing in body, mind, spirit, relationship. We pray for our church and ministries, for our community, for our world, and we pray for ourselves in these moments of silence. Lord, in your mercy, receive all our prayers. I invite you to lift up your bread. 
on the night in which he gave himself up for us. Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You can put your bread down. And I invite you to pick up your cup. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, loving God, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You can put your cup down. And so remembering, loving God, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice of love and service, intimately bound with Christ's offering for us. I invite you to lift up your hands toward your bread and cup. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered across geography and time, and pour out your Holy Spirit on the gifts of bread and cup that each of us has brought. Make all of these gifts of bread and cup be for us sustenance for our days, the sacrament of love for simple and ordinary lives, fuel for justice in this world. By your Spirit, open us to one another, open us to the world, making us one in you through Christ, in the power of your amazing grace. You can put your hands down and join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The bread and juice, the baked goods and beverage that we eat, are a tangible experience of Jesus' transforming grace and love, feeding us, healing us, and empowering us from the inside out. I invite you to pick up your piece of bread. Eat and experience that this is Jesus' love for you. I invite you now to pick up your cup. Drink and experience that this is Jesus' love for you. Please join with me in a spirit of prayer. Loving God, thank you for this sacrament in which you give yourself to us, feeding us through these everyday gifts of bread and juice. Send us into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship this morning. Whether you're in the sanctuary, at home, or traveling on the road, your participation helps make us better together. Here are the three most important things you need to know as you seek to put your faith into action this week. Number one, the entire world has been shocked and saddened by recent tragic events in the Ukraine. UMCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, is already in place in Eastern Europe, providing needed humanitarian aid to those who need it most. You can help support this effort by your donation today. You can use our online giving portal, or you can bring a check into the church with Ukraine in the memo line. Number two, we hope you'll mark your calendar and tell your friends the next Wouldn't It Be Lovely fabulous showcase sale is Saturday, March 26th. The sale begins at 9 a.m., and the hundreds of items of refinished furniture and home decor will sell out quickly. You're not going to want to miss this sale. And number three, donations to the DAUMC Micro Pantry continue to lag behind demand. When you go to the store this week, please take a moment to pick up a non-perishable food item, 
cleaning items or hygiene items and bring them to the food pantry on the west end of the DAUMC campus. Your bounty is good enough to help those in need. Of course, none of these efforts would be possible without your dedicated financial support. You can support the life-changing ministries at DAUMC right now. Visit our online giving portal. Simply use the QR code on your screen. You also have the option to use automatic bill pay with your bank, ACH money transfer through the DAUMC bank, or simply bring or send your check to the church. If you're worshiping in person this morning, you'll find handy donation boxes in the front and back of the sanctuary. While you're at it, please take a moment to fill out our online contact form. You'll find a link in the comments section of online worship and a QR code on the front of this morning's bulletin for in-person worship. Now, it's time to return to worship. Please join us in singing, Open My Eyes That I May See. Our Lent series in worship is based on the book of devotions of the same name by Kate Bowler and Jessica Ritchie. Kate Bowler is a seminary professor whose research about the history of the prosperity gospel and self-help movements in the United States laid the groundwork for her latest best-selling books about dealing with the pressure to live your best life now, when life throws you curveballs that make constant upward achievement very difficult, like the cancer she has dealt with over the last few years. In the Good Enough Books of Devotions, looks like this, Kate and Jessica offer wonderfully graceful invitations to seek alternatives to the pressure of perfectionism. We hope that you will make reading these daily devotions part of your Lent practice and to use with the book or on its own this devotional guide called A Good Enough Lent a 40-day companion to read, reflect, and pray. Both of these resources are available at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and all the information on how to access them is in our e-newsletter, or you can contact us in the church office. We also encourage you to join in one of our small groups for deepening your experience through conversation and prayer with others. We have our Good Enough Facebook group, and the link and QR code to join in that are uh, right in the comments and on the screen. And then there are groups meeting on Wednesday morning online and then Sunday morning in person. We also pray that you will continue in your times of worship, online worship with us uh, through Facebook and YouTube, or join with us for worship in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings at 8.15 and 10.30. Again, all of the details on small groups and worship are there for you in our e-newsletter.
And so each worship experience during this season of a good enough Lent, we will end with a blessing from the book. Here is a blessing for a joyfully mediocre journey. Receive this blessing for a joyfully mediocre journey. Blessed are you who realize there is simply not enough. Time, money, resources. Blessed are you who are tired of pretending that raw effort is the secret to perfection. It's not, and you know that now. Blessed are you who need a gentle reminder that even now, even today, God is here, and somehow that is good enough. Thank you for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church as we explore a good enough Lent. I pray that you will continue to join with us, that this experience has been meaningful and powerful for you, and that you will continue to worship with us online or for those uh, worship in the sanctuaries on Sunday morning at 8, 15, and 10, 30. I encourage you uh, again as well to use the contact form so that we can get in contact with you, connect with you, uh, be able to get you that all-important e-newsletter. And remember that there's a place on that contact form for you to put prayer requests that go to our pastors and to our prayer team. So please do use that uh, contact form. We love to be in prayer with you. We long to be in prayer with you and to connect with you in that way. And now, may the God who loves all of creation, especially the ordinary parts, and Jesus, our companion along this crooked path called life, and the Holy Spirit who loves to improvise in surprising ways, go with you, dwell among you, and give you joy. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.